Transformers Devastation. Hello there, Sir from 17 once again. This is my Transformers Devastation Prime difficulty walkthrough. It will be playing as Bumblebee, and Bumblebee is generally classed as the weakest character in the game because he just has the lowest attack. But to make up for this, he has an additional vehicle attack, which is quite special to him. And I, I still think he's one of the most powerful characters, so do not be afraid to pick him. It's just you'll notice at first, he is a little, you know, on the weaker side. You have to hit things a few times. But that's not to worry about, because on Prime difficulty, you're going to have to hit things a lot of times anyway. But this is Mission 1. It is the City of Steel. And at the moment in time, I'm using subpar weapons. But it's okay, because we'll get some cool ones on our journey here. And I have in no ways leveled this character up to accommodate the difficulty. You can if you want to. You don't need to. But all you're going to see here is it's going to force me to try a little bit harder than perhaps you might have to. As I take a glancing blow and my life goes down to pretty much like 5% or 2% of my bar. Which is not going to be that rare of a thing. Like, this difficulty damages you incredibly steeply. But for the most, it's pretty much Magnus difficulty just with higher level enemies. That's all it is, really. And the jump from commander difficulty to, to Magnus is essentially the hardest part of the game. This is really manageable compared to that. It's just, it is a jump, so you are going to see damage, but for everything else it's going to be primarily the same. Enemies are going to off-screen you all the time. This game does not care if you care that they can attack off-screen, because they just will. Enemies are going to have the highest life they can physically have in the game, and they are going to do the most damage they can physically do in the game. Everything else is entirely up to you. The equipment you have, the chips you have, you know, all of that is based on your play. And at this point, you could have a, a max level, like, SS tier weapon that does ridiculous damage. You know, you could seriously be killing stuff in one to two hits if you have the gear to do it. However, this walkthrough was my third playthrough. And I did my first playthrough as Bumblebee which was on Commander, and then I did my second playthrough as Optimus Prime, and I recorded it so you can see that if you want the Magnus walkthrough. And this is my third playthrough, so that is all the experience I've had with the game. I did no farming, I did no grinding, did nothing like that. This is literally as you see. It is straight up third playthrough engage on the hardest difficulty. So, a couple of strategies you're going to see me doing this. You're going to see me link shooting combos, into vehicle attacks in between them. Occasionally you'll see me use the second of the charged vehicle attacks to go into a rush attack combo to reset an enemy and do some good damage and maybe get a launch. You might not see me doing the slow motion uh, shoot dodge. Uh, shoot dodge? Not a word, that's a combination of both dive and dodge. It's like something out of dodgeball. Uh, which is essentially when you get the focus time by dodging an attack at the last possible instant if you press dodge and then aim your weapon, you'll go into a Max Payne-esque slow motion side dodge. And it's incredibly powerful because if you have a good gun and you shoot people in the face, even on prime difficulty you will kill stuff really quickly. And it's a good way of getting your rank up as well. Because the ranking on this game unfortunately forces you to, instead of playing really fancy and doing something that looks cool and feels amazing, it wants you to tick a lot of arbitrary mundane boxes and repeat a lot of fundamental skills to, to just chip up your score and I find it really bizarre that they've chosen this to be the score system but it just is what it is so um, you're not probably going to see too many SS ranks on this because you really have to cultivate them in a way that's perhaps not the most fun uh, to play but I'm definitely going to SS rank this game. I don't know if it'll be on Prime. I'm going to go Commander first so I can get the achievement and maybe understand the ranking system a bit better. And then I'm going to try Prime. And the only trepidations I have about doing that is the game is way slower on Commander. So it's going to throw off my timing a lot. So I might just go straight on to Prime and just be done with it that way because, you know, why not? So this fight right now, you'll notice there was a transition. <laughs> it's always a tricky fight. I don't know why. 
it's something about the placement of the guys up on the buildings and these particular insecticons that they just make it really tricky and off the bat I take a massive hit when I really shouldn't and there's going to be a lot of custard getting chucked on this difficulty so beware the pink goo it is straight up dangerous and you want to avoid touching it at all costs but these are some standard um, transformers here so take them out however you choose to using combinations of the special moves and the gun attacks and the vehicle attacks. Bumblebee has a pretty decent gun stat, so you want to use that to your advantage to get that extra damage. Of course, you don't have to. You can play this game really how you want to. And depending on what chips you're going to be equipping will depend on where your advantages are. Once you unlock Prime, it will enable you to buy the most expensive but the best chips in the game, which cost 50,000 of the credits. And they give you some really, really good abilities, so I, I really advise just running the lottery with those chips for as long as you can until you get something that has like plus 30% whatever it is that you like to do with a second plus 30% something awesome on it. Or something that augments two great abilities at the same time. That's what I would definitely recommend. Because you get some great ones like, you know, ultimate attack up 30% or melee attack up 30%, but then they'll have something shit on it. If you can get two where it's like ultimate attack recovery 30% and vehicle attacks plus 30%, then you're going to have a lot of success with that. With Bumblebee, his vehicle attack is fucking hor horrendous. He's, uh, his ultimate, sorry, not his vehicle. His vehicle's not so bad. His special is better than his ultimate, his overdrive move is way more recommended than his ultimate because his ultimate just doesn't do the damage it really doesn't and it's super frustrating when you compare it to I, I don't know the names guys so I do apologize but you know the guy who has the one who's got the guns and he just fires a ton of rockets at somebody that move is insanely damaging when you spec to it you can make that kill stuff on prime like it was born to do it and that move is amazing Optimus is prime when when he does the ground smash thing is way better than Bumblebee's. Bumblebee's is just... He got the shit end of the stick because not only does it look crap, but it is crap. And a lot of the times, stuff looks crappy and it's great, but this don't. Which is really disappointing. But there was Devastator. At this point, you should know that shooting him in the face or attacking his face is his weak spot, but you don't have to do it if you don't want to. You can keep a consistent combo on his legs, and if you do it right, you can knock him over. But I'll speak more about that the next time we encounter him coming up. But Bumblebee's Overdrive is really good at resetting people, especially people with armor. So I've already discussed armor in my Magnus walkthrough, but I'm going to go over it again for the, the new people who are watching this. Whenever certain enemies attack you, if you punch them, you'll not interrupt them. At certain points you can, but there are certain ones who have this property known as armor, which is a fighting game terminology for being able to take a hit without interrupting your animations. And uh, there are certain bosses later on who can do it, and there are certain enemies that are really good at it too. So you need to be aware of the enemies that can armor through your attacks, because you cannot stop them. You have to do something specific. You can't just flail on them and hope to interrupt because it's not going to work and you're going to take big damage. However, Bumblebee has this move where he slides between their legs or he hops on their head if you're in mid-hair. And when you do this, it's a reset. It's, it's the equivalent of using Makoto's uh, command grab to set them up. And it's really, really powerful because you can combo and when you know they're about to counter you, you can use his overdrive and get full iframes and slide through their legs and begin comboing them again. And you can do this about two to three times depending on how you're specced before you have to wait for it to regenerate. And you can augment this with vehicle combos, with air combos, and you can trap people in unending combos that are really vicious. And I'm using a, an underleveled Bumblebee right now, so just imagine if we had some power, we would be able to one-loop these bosses. Like, we beat Megatron just then, without getting touched. And it's not a difficult thing to do, in fact, I think Megatron is actually one of the easier bosses in the game. But, we didn't even need to reset him. That's how powerful the reset is. Like, it is so good, but it doesn't work, of course, on the bigger stuff. And probably on the smaller stuff as well. Like, the super small and the super big. But here is just some standard enemies. Uh, these guys take a, a nice amount of damage. And I think that's one of the reasons why I prefer this game to Bayonetta 2. Because the damage seems right. 
and on Bayonetta 2 it really doesn't, unless you're playing as Rosa. Like, Rosa is the only character who feels like enemies die at the, about the right amount of damage, and this is not me detracting anything from Bayonetta 2, that game is an amazing game, and I love it, and I can't get wait to get back and play it, but my biggest gripe in that game is just how much the enemies don't die. So, bunch of Insecticons, we get the focus, we get to punish, god this game is so good. If you're playing it on the, the PS4, you will have a consistent frame rate I think, Digital Foundry was saying. If you play on the Xbox One, there is fluctuations in frame rate, but the frame rate still stays kind of high during those fluctuations, so they're a lot easier on the eye. I've never had a moment where I've noticed the frame rate go absolutely horribly outside of the Devastator fights. That's when you notice the frame rate, but even then, because you're going in slow-mo a lot, I think it's much easier to get away with it, so... Even though I sound like this person who is obsessed with frame rate, and in a lot of ways I am, as long as it's higher than 30, I'm okay with it. Like, if you can have a, a plus 50 frame rate, and I don't see the... I can't interpolate the in-betweens, then I'm okay. It's when you can see it, like... I had to put the Street Fighter V beta on my PC down to medium because the frame rate in the menus was fucking horrible. It was so laggy. It was the worst experience in the world. But then when I got in the game, it was straight 60. So I could have turned it up higher, but I didn't. And it was this weird thing of everywhere outside the menus, the frame rate was, was like at 30 and horrible. But then as soon as we got into training mode and I was fighting, it was solid 60. But the difference between the two, especially in a fighting game, is the most important thing in the world. Because high frame rate in a fighting game is essential. Just like it is in high paced first person shooters, just like it is in character driven action games and simulation racing games. You need the most responsive experience possible because if you don't, the game can fall down and it isn't your fault. That was weird, I missed my shot. But a rule of thumb, whenever you've got enemies off screen who can shoot, is you want to be dodging when you're coming out of combos and you want to be turning the, co the camera to see exactly what they're doing. If you do that correctly, you can usually get focus all the time coming out of combos and you can use that focus to beat up the people who are trying to kill you. But there goes mission 9. We get a B rank even though I took no damage, I was quite quick and I had all those other things. You see what I mean? It, it, it really doesn't make any sense to me, the ranking system. Sure, I wasn't too stylish there, but I got no damage, so... How is it such a weak bonus? 200, like, you get the same bonus, score-wise, for doing a fight quick as you do for doing it with no damage. And that's not how it should be, I don't think. Like, if you don't get touched, you should get rewarded big time. And on this game now, kill ending fights quickly is the easiest thing on the planet because I have a plus 50 fucking Menasaur sword that has 10,000 damage, like 11,000 damage on it. It murders everything, even on Prime. It is absolutely ridiculous. I have a sniper rifle that's got like 12,000 damage on it or something stupid. I have these weapons that are just so powerful, they melt things. So ending a fight quickly is so easy and if you can no damage it and end it quickly, how the hell is that not an SS rank? And it happens all the time where it's not the best rank. And it's funny because you can look at, I think it's the instruction booklet online, where they're, they're like, just because you do a fight quickly and you take no damage doesn't necessarily guarantee you'll get the SS rank. You have to go above and beyond the call. It's like, no, you don't. You really don't, Mr. Rank Designer. You have to do boring, meticulous nonsense that nobody wants to do. <laughs> like, you look at online at this moment in time, all the strategies I've seen have, have generally been from people I've never heard of, so I would, I would you know, he be hesitant to call them advanced strategies. But a lot of the people who have done it and got the SS ranks, all their strategies involve putting on a weak gun and shoot dodging and shooting people in the face and doing that a lot. Because you kill them too quickly if you don't use a weak gun and that's one of the easiest things to spam. So how miserable is that going to be to fucking watch? Just everybody shoot dodging for 20 minutes just to, just to get that arbitrary score. I think it sounds horrible. And it sucks because I love this game. This is straight up game of the year contender for me. And... I can listen to Darkseid Phil on those reviews and just shake my head because this is a dude, right? And I do apologise if I'm talking too much about Darkseid Phil. I've kind of been mentioning him a few times, but I think it's always worth it because he's one of those people on YouTube that when you watch it, you're, you're always astounded. 
But he played this game, and through the entire thing, I heard nothing but good things. Like, he was enjoying it, he was having fun, he was happy. And then, of course, it didn't get any views, so he was bitching about that, and he was getting all miserable. But, on a base level, he was really enjoying his time with the game. Then in his review, he went on to say that it could never be a Game of the Year contender because there's not enough content on it to really call it a proper game, essentially. So, the way he equates quality in a game is directly inspired by how long it is. And I find that bullshit. I find that to be the worst kind of review in my eyes. Because you can beat some of the best games ever made in under an hour. What the fuck does that have to do with how much you enjoy it and how good a game is? Like, it doesn't. And it makes no sense that that would ever be this barometer of quality. Like, if you're smiling the entire time you're playing it, how is it not a good game? And mechanically and objectively, maybe it has a few rough spots, but this game doesn't. The only problem with these games, this game has is a lack of diversity and a lack of length. That is it. Everything else is personal preference and everything else he seemed to love so for him to go out and not give it a good review I was like what the fuck are you talking about but we'll see won't we folks because he's been playing Halo 5 and I don't think I've ever heard anybody sound so uninterested in playing a game in my entire life it is the most miserable thing I've ever watched and it's almost sad because I feel sorry for the people who like Halo who are watching his playthrough and he literally sounds like he's painting a fucking ceiling it's bullshit and you know in his review he's going to give it a 7 or an 8 and say it's a really good game but this is lacking. Because it's just what he does. You know, it's weird. Super weird. But I love this game. I really do. It's just a fun game. And that's it. And that's enough for me. You know? I don't look at it as I can beat it in 2 hours if I, if I rush past everything. I don't look at it like that. Because I don't want to beat it in 2 hours. You know, I want to get max weapons. I want to see if I can get optimum equipment and, and run those, you know, random loot box things. Like, I want to play back through it. I want to know damage the bosses. I want to do all this stuff. I want to figure out the meta game. I want to know everything about it. I just, uh, I love it. I really do. And this is the, is it Deconstructor Cons? I, I, I'm no good with the names, guys. It's been a while since I've played this game, too, thanks to... Halo 5 and, and Assassin's Creed Syndicate. But there's a unique parry on one of these enemies because one of them can fire drills at you and you can catch it and throw it back. But throwing it back does almost no damage. So it's one of those things like, why would you ever do it? Because it's way more skill intensive and there's no reward. And it's one of those things that stupefies my brain because the person who's the director of this game directed Metal Gear Rising. A game where if you can parry, you are rewarded the, the most heavily you have ever been in any game. Like, I don't know a game where parrying is as dangerous as it is in that game. And when I say dangerous, I don't mean for you. <laughs> like, you miss a parry on that game, well, you know, you missed a parry, good luck. But if you land one, you kill. It's wonderful. It's the ultimate risk versus reward. It's straight up Bushido Blade. And if you never played Bushido Blade back in the day... I think that's one of the best fighting games ever made because it was essentially, it was fencing. It was video game fencing. And I think that sounds super cool as I miss a basic evade. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> you see the damage though? You're going to see me running around most of this game like this because you can't take damage. <laughs> it's just that thing. Like, it's a difficulty that demands of you high levels of performance and if you're you know scrubbing it up you're just not gonna have a good time the only thing I don't like about being low life in this game is what it does to the external parts of the screen I don't like the swelling red I appreciate it's a way of telling the player that is in trouble but I've never needed it I am always aware of my HP in, in character driven action games because I'm generally always looking at it and the whole point of these games is to get to a point where you don't have to take hits, where you don't take damage, so the life bar becomes pointless. But when you do take a hit, I don't want to be reminded of my failings by a constantly swelling um, you know, piece of design work. I find it kind of annoying. And a lot of these modern games do it. Some of the earlier ones really didn't. Like in God Hand, 
the edges of the screen does go red, but it's nowhere near as, as intrusive. Like, we don't need... And the ones that make sound, the ones that make sound are the worst. If your game is making sound to tell me that I'm dying, I'm angry at you. I really am. By the way, there was a transition there because I couldn't link this footage, but I came back and smashed this after going the other way. But I was driving around the city a little bit, trying to smash some things, and I didn't want to waste your time. Because on the previous guide, I did a lot of exploring and a lot of breaking, and I didn't want to do that for this. But, this is the second fight against these green dudes. And, this is a- that was it, that was a reset, guys, you see it? Attack, combo, as soon as he recovers, use the overdrive, go between his legs, put him in a stunned state, and then punish him. And this enemy, show it no mercy. It is a big bitch. It is one of the worst enemies in the game because all it does is run away and drop green jizz everywhere. And the green jizz is so trolly. It's the worst. Be careful doing this too. It's not safe. And right there, I panic ultimate to so I don't take any damage. I love the music on this game as well. I used the music from this game on that intro tester for the interim intro that got all that weird response from certain people and I think one of the people on there thought I was going to use the music from this game on the intro all the time so they were on about how they thought that the music on that particular intro was like a 14 year old metalcore and I'm like fuck you dude the music in this game is amazing the only people who don't like it are the ones who are taking it too seriously the people that label every fucking genre with something new and I don't like those people at all. You're not listening to Crust. That Crust is not a genre. Crust is on pizza. God damn it. That was weird. I lost my auto aim. And you'll notice I'm shooting him now because I'm like, fuck this dude. <laughs> Every hit he's got on me has been from the stupid jizz. I, ugh. Worst enemy in the game, jizz monster man. But now that he's dead, we can continue onwards. There's not long left of the level. I keep doing that even though I've already done it. I love the transformation noise as well. It's so subtle, but it's there. That thing. Love it. Love everything about it. And it's really useful too, because the Elgato made every single piece of footage on this particular walkthrough out of sync because it's a piece of shit. Don't buy it. Don't support it. And I had to use that noise oftentimes to, to, to link up the sound to the video. But the best noise, for anybody wondering, was when I broke a box. Whenever you see me drive through a box, it is the best way to sync audio, and I loved every single time I did that. But here is the final fight of the chapter. It's up against another bunch of green dudes, I think. This one is always a fun fight. It's great music. Just nice enemies. I think this might be the one with the drill guy. It is. Sorry, guys. The other one wasn't the drill dude. This is the drill dude. That is the projectile you can parry. But don't bother. It's a waste of time. Like, I don't know if you can throw it at him at a specific moment and it does more damage but from my testing <laughs> it really wasn't great and instead just do this keep him in the air and right then after the shot if I'd have pressed left trigger I could have reset him and gone into another combo in the air super powerful but at this moment I didn't really use it because I thought it was pointless I'd not figured out just how useful it can be see there interrupted his attack put him into a stun state now he's stunned combo shoot shoot and I should have done it again, but it's it's wicked powerful, guys. But the problem with this game, there's no high level of play on YouTube. There's nobody doing super crazy gameplay just yet. When I was searching for it the other day, literally couldn't find anything. Everybody's using day one strategies. Nobody's figured out the super crazy broken shit yet. And a lot of the people who have got gameplay up are just using high level characters, high level gear. And I just don't find that to be very interesting to watch. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's effective. And I wouldn't look down on anybody for doing it, but I'm looking for, you know, the people who are really good at Bayonetta coming in and, and showing some advanced techniques that I've not discovered myself so that the game and the community can grow as a whole. But there's a lot of games at the moment and everybody's really scattered, so there's probably not that many people focused on it. And if they are, I don't know of them yet. But I'm definitely going to be giving this game some licks because it's just a fun game. And sometimes it's all you need. But I've trimmed out all the arc moments again. You don't need to see me in the shop. Just know that I'm always messing about with stuff. Because I love it. I think it's great. And I mentioned at the end of the Assassin's Creed game that I really don't like sandbox games. 
However, if there was a game like this in a sandbox, I think I'd love it. And I think that's what it is. The reason why I resent sandbox so much is because it's an excuse to have subpar gameplay. It's an excuse for other areas of your game to not be as good. And that's what makes me really sad. Whereas a game like this, the gameplay is so tight and so well designed that if it was in a sandbox, it's just gravy. Because it just gives you a, a bigger area to play in. And that's my biggest issue, I think, with sandbox games. You know, I finally realised why it is I dislike them so much. It's because they never, ever feel as good as they should. They just don't. The only one that has is probably Arkham or Metal Gear. Because those were two games that mastered their gameplay before they went open world. But this is Devastator. And if you hit his leg enough, he'll fall down, and then you can hit him in the face, which is what I'm doing now to get some extra damage off him. Uh, my best recommendation is to shoot him in the face. Shooting me in the face is incredibly powerful. Uh, he's another enemy as well who you can parry his drill, but it doesn't do enough to warrant doing. Like, if you get distance in this second phase when his drill hands are on, he will fire the drill at you, and you can parry it and throw it at him, but it literally does less than a punch. So I have no idea why it's... It's like that. I might be doing something wrong, but who knows. Maybe there's the sweet spot where you've got to chuck it at. I couldn't tell you. So instead, I'm just going to keep pressure on him, and I'm going to keep beating him up. And anybody wondering why I have full life now as opposed to before? It is just the majesty of editing guys and checkpoints. I am not a player who never dies when I make walkthroughs. I'm not a person who never gets killed, never makes mistakes. I'm human, and these, these guys just are the optimum run. You don't see the mistakes. Well, you do. <laughs> you do. But not the, the really big ones. But there you go, guys. There was City of Steel. Thank you very much for watching. And you take care now.